We are doing some Salesforce training called Working with Leads and Opportunities. The learning objective is after we've completed this unit, we'll be able to use the lead workspace to action our leads and move them toward conversion. Number two, use the Opportunity Workspace to do more in contest text with less clicks. And third, gain an at-glance insight to the accounts and contacts. Okay. So getting started with uh, using Salesforce. Salesforce comes with a set of powerful tools to support your sales process, optimized to help you do more in less time with fewer mouse clicks. So for example, a need to call or quickly log a call you made to a prospect, there's a handy composer to do that. Want to gain insight faster before you make a call uh, to a top client? Account Insights has you covered. Need an easy way to visualize your deals uh, in flight, check it out, check it out in the dashboards or spin it up quickly on a, on a chart that you can create in a list to view that you create. No matter what you need, you've got options. In the last unit, we've got your day started with fast with the home tab. Now we're ready to work on closing some business. So let's go ahead and continue the tour. Let's start working with leads. So working our leads, that's, that's what this visual is about. As a reminder, Leads are your prospects who've expressed interest in your product, but haven't, you haven't yet qualified to buy. In Salesforce, your goal with leads is to drive conversion, the moment when the prospect becomes qualified to buy. Converting a lead creates a contact along with an account and opportunity. But first, you have to qualify the lead to see if that really makes sense to do that conversion. So the leads workspace is a powerful interface that emphasizes the actions that you need to take to drive conversions, to make sales. Uh, front and center is sales path, which can be customized for your sales process to include your statuses and contextual guidance at each step. For example, uh, if you're at the open, not contacted status, you might want to want uh, guidance on what channels to try to reach your lead or suggestions on how you want to leave a great voicemail. If you're working, uh, if you're at the working uh, contacted stage, you might find it useful to have a set of qualification questions sourced by our top sales reps and teammates. Okay, so there's also a handy composer for making quotes like logging a call, setting up a meeting, or creating a, a follow-up task as, as we see here, log a call. Now, to, uh, to uh, collaborate, the, the, uh, the collaborate tab allows you to collaborate with colleagues in the context of this particular record. For example, you might know someone who has worked with this lead in the past, you could mention them in a, in a post and ask if they have any insights to share to help you convert this lead, or maybe you're teaming up with a particular client. This would be a good place to, to use the collaboration tab. Now, if you don't see all the fields you wanna see, then click on the details tab for a complete view, okay? In addition to, uh, to uh, driving action, you can see important details highlighted at the top of the page in an activity timeline uh, with next steps and history and, uh, of actions taken. So you can see this activity tab, it shows you uh, what it prompts you on what to do next, okay? So, and, and, and it also has a Twitter integration to stay on top of the latest social media insights and so on. And if you'll remember, we had uh, a lead we were working to convert, which had an overdue follow-up task. We can see that task right here on, on this page, okay? So, now, so let's take care of this and, and, and let's see if we can get this lead converted. So after reviewing our lead in detail, we call our lead and find out that they are in fact qualified to buy, okay? So we set up our task to complete and now we're ready to convert. In the upper right hand corner of the workspace, we simply click convert and then we create our account and opportunity, okay? And once we're done, we get a nice 
a, a confirmation, okay? So next, now we have a, a, a contact with an associated account and opportunity. We've created, uh, all of these are created automatically as part of the conversion process. And you probably, of course, we're probably anxious to go right to the opportunity and start working it. But let's check out this contact and account first and see what it, what it says and what we have at, at our fingertips, okay? Now, reference contacts and accounts. Now, as a reminder, accounts are companies or people, entities or organizations that we do business with, and contacts are the people who work uh, who, who work for these companies. That's the typical use. Uh, some people, such as our industry, we don't have, uh, we typically work with multiple individuals within uh, a company, so, so we may enter the name in that spot instead. But the idea is, when you're working with accounts and contacts, we want to be able to find information fast. So, we, so Salesforce designed a page with quick reference and at-a-glance uh, insights in mind. So let's take a look. Here's our contact that we just converted from our lead. One of the first things you'll notice is this page looks different from a lead. The emphasis here is on the opportunity, cases and notes that are related to the contact. And when you link your Twitter account, for example, there's also social integration. Plus, there's a composer for making updates placed on the right-hand side uh, of the page uh, uh, along with a tab for collaboration, if you want to collaborate with uh, with another uh, colleague on this particular lead. Okay, now, like a like a lead, there's a set of fields highlighted at the top of the record. Okay, one of these is our account that was created at the time we converted our lead. If we hover over it, we can see the details at a glance, and we can just simply drill down with a single click. So, clicking on this company name here, it gives us some detail about the organization, okay? Now, let's go ahead and click through, and uh, now we're looking at the account, okay? Now, this is the account we're seeing here. The layout is similar to the contact, except we also see a list of all the contacts associated with the, this account displayed. So, a lot of times we talk to people, and there's multiple different partners, we can use this to, to associate them together. Uh, a lot of uh, the CRMs don't have the ability to do this. Here, you, we, we can link these people together. We know they're associated with each other. So there's, a, there's the contact we're just viewing, and hovering over the link also shows us the, detail in, uh, the, the details at a glance, okay? Now, okay, so uh, want to go back to the contact? Simply click the link, and you're back, okay? Click the contact link, and you're back. You can navigate this way through all the pages in Salesforce, by clicking on links in each record. Now let's try this out one more time by clicking on our opportunity so that we can check out the oppor uh, check out the opportunity workspace, okay? Now, working with opportunities. Now, we've arrived at the place you'll be spending most of your time in Salesforce. Opportunities is the place where we spend most of our time, okay? This is where the magic happens, where you where you actually take your converted leads and close deals. So let's go ahead and do this. So see what's front and center again? It's, it's path, but optimize for your opportunity stages. There are sometimes more stages with opportunities than statuses for leads. So having guidance in context is especially important. So right here is where, where we focus is in the opportunity because it's, you know, it's all about making sales. That's how we stay in business. Okay. Now, since you're uh, talking about uh, coaching in PATH, here are some examples of helpful coaching stages in the, in the process. Okay. Here's examples of things we can do in the sales process that, that can be uh, noted in, in this section. Okay. Now, like it says here, it is, let's read this together. Uh, a quick best practice, work with your admin on crowdsourcing tips from your top sales reps to populate the guidance uh, included in this path. So example, if we have certain closing things we say <clears throat> or suggestions we make to customer, this can all be done here so we can share our ideas back and forth. And, and uh, so this has benefits including reinforcing a consistent selling methodology across the team to help to help uh, your A, B, and C 
uh, uh, people uh, become A players on board with new team members faster and just in time uh, uh, guidance right in Salesforce. So uh, the, a lot of the closing ideas and things we say and, and overcoming objections, this can, be, this can be placed right in here in this section so people can collab, uh, collaborate and share ideas, okay? Now, okay, like leads, you'll also find a composer for creating follow-up tasks and setting up meeting invites plus tabs for collaboration and a detailed view of all fields in the records, okay? You'll also find an easy way to add a contact and assign a contact role without ever leaving the, work, uh, the, the workspace. Okay, now we switch to, now that we're familiar with the layout, let's, get, let's go ahead and get to work. Now, when we are home, the home tab, we saw one of our, our one of our biggest opportunities because it's here, which is something we had entered before, and we we don't have to follow up, uh, and we didn't have a follow up task created. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and take care of that. So we do follow up, and we'll add this opportunity and turn it into a task uh, using Composer. So this is to remind us to follow up with this person. So what we do is we first click home, okay, then we add from the assistant, we click on op the opportunity, okay? And then under past activity, we saw see our last call to the customer and that was yesterday and the, uh, uh, the and, our, and our contracts are in hand. The, the things we're gonna sell them, we, we know we have our, all our ducks in a row. So, so let's go ahead and make a task to follow up tomorrow and let's just see how things are going, okay? So we're entering the, the subject, the date and so on, okay? Now, now we have our task created. We're confident we can close this out by tomorrow, but we should take a step back and look at all, all of our opportunities in the pipeline to make sure we haven't missed anything else. To do this, we simply visit the Opportunity Object homepage by clicking Opportunities, okay? Then we select the list view, such as My Opportunities, and select the uh, Kanban view is what they call it, okay? Now, now we're ready to go ahead and use the what's called, the, they call the Kanban view. What that means is the Kanban view organizes a set of records into columns to track your work at a glance. Uh, to update a record status, you simply drag it into a different column, okay? Uh, so you can configure your board by selecting what fields uh, columns and summaries are based on and, and get personalized alerts so you can get opportunities in flight, okay? Now visualize your work in each uh, stage or status is one thing you can do. You can also move records between columns using the drag and drop functionality. You can configure columns and summary fields on the fly. You can edit or delete records to keep them up to date and you can quickly create filters to slice how your how uh, the data how you want. And then for opportunities, you can get alerts to notify you when you need to, uh, when you need, when it's needed on a key deal, okay? Now, uh, next, let's go ahead and go to, um, uh, let's go to this next section, and we're talking about the, the records in the uh, Kanban view are based on the selected list view. That's number one. Then number two, we easily toggle between the list view and grid view in this Kanban view. Number three, we filter your records to view a particular subset of the records, okay? And then four, we select a new record type to view. And then five, the columns are created uh, based on the grouping field. Six, we quickly move a record to a different column by dragging the uh, by dragging and drop, dropping a card. And the seven for opportunities, alerts tell us how to keep a deal on track, for example, create a, a task or event, okay? Now, uh, opportunity alerts in the Kanban view. Let's go ahead and take a look at how the Kanban view helps you keep your deals moving forward with opportunity alerts. Alerts are only available for, for opportunities, okay? So click on cards in the opportunity Kanban view and draw your attention to deals requiring your attention like opportunities without an associated activity. So speaking of which, here's our opportunity that we just converted 
and then we've got an alert uh, showing that because we didn't yet make an activity okay so it keeps the sales process moving forward because we can we can drag different activities to different uh, columns different dates and times and that will alert us that it's time to take action on that particular client so it just makes our job easier it sets up automatic reminders and so uh, it gives us less to juggle the the program does the juggling for us so now we can create a task to set up uh, to set up a meeting for example okay now and as and as you can see we we never have to leave the uh, kanban board once it's done, the alert disappears, okay? Okay, now that we've learned how Salesforce supports the sales process, the powerful tools and features, in the next unit, we'll, we'll finish up our tour by exploring ways beyond the Kanban board to work with your records uh, at, at, uh, at different, different levels, okay? So uh, go ahead and review this video if you need it, and uh, I think you'll find it helpful. It kind of gives us some ideas about how to use the, uh, the, you know, the difference between leads and opportunities and how to work uh, with them. Hope this helped.